Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. It's another Bright Diaries today and today we're talking all about toys. That might sound a bit bizarre, but basically toy drive is really important for a lot of the training that I do here. So it's really important that I can reward the dog with both food and toys and make sure that both of them are quite fun. This is optional, but it can be really good for both your relationship with your dog or your puppy. And also it can be really useful for particular training and behaviors. So toy drive is awesome if you haven't already press the subscribe button hit the bell icon and remember guys if you've not watched bright diaries before please go ahead and watch the first episode because that covers my theory basically and how i train my dogs which is really important that will be linked above but let's jump in to toy drive in the interest of transparency, it's worth noting that this is Bright at seven weeks old where she was first introduced to toys. So this is the very, very first time that she had seen toys and the toys that I choose personally are from Swag, which is Southwest Agility Goods. Here in the UK, they are really well-made toys and um, my dogs just really like them. For puppies and dogs that are new to play, definitely would recommend Chaser Toys, which is what these ones are with long handles. But if you are struggling with getting your dog interested in toys, definitely go ahead and look at Craig Gilvey from Gilvey Dogs, who um, does a load of work with um, toy drive and things, and he also trains online. So wherever you are in the world, he can help you out. So when Bright came home, basically, we kind of just carried on with what we'd started at that seven week session. So she's eight weeks here, very early days. And essentially we're using um, a toy. It doesn't matter which toy we like to entertain, interchange toys here, but really I'm getting her used to being um, touched on her um, body while she is tugging without having a, you know, an adverse reaction. And I'm also um, just making sure that I can transition her from the toy onto food, which we can. You can teach your dog to leave toys using that method, but I, I prefer actually to use a different way. Everything that I'm gonna do in this video is just how I do it. So we make the toy interesting. Well, you let your dog finish eating first. Um, but we make the toy interesting by moving it along the floor like it was a basically a little animal. So we're not throwing the toy at the dog's face. We're not flapping it about in their face because why would you do that? Um, we drag it along the floor, make it look like it's alive, and then when the dog gets onto it, we just retain pressure. So we're not yanking the dog or throwing the dog around, and we actually move mostly in horizontal motions rather than pulling towards or away from us. So with a young dog, do try and make sure that you don't put too much pressure on, and this is how Bright first learnt to leave. So this is the very first leave, and essentially we just made the toy dead, therefore it becomes very boring and we wait for the dog to release the toy. As soon as the dog releases the toy, the dog gets the toy back. And that happens every single time until the leave is a solid behavior. So we do tug, 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 and then we hold and wait and release, give it back. It's very, very important that whenever the dog releases, they get the toy back. The reason why most dogs will not leave toys or items is because they usually have it taken away from them when they let go. And therefore, as soon as the release happens, it's given back. And you'll notice that we're getting quicker and quicker and quicker with the time taken to release. So... This is the middle of another session. I've gone, you know what, let's just do some toy play. So we bring out a toy, different toy to last time, if you notice, and she's straight on that toy, awesome. So again, we're using horizontal motion, getting them used to the touch, getting them used to being, uh, you know, handled and moved about. It's okay if she flips to the side because usually she's doing that herself. And again, we're doing a little leave it. So there is never really more than 30 seconds without a leave, but every leave is followed with having the toy straight back. So if the dog loses interest in the toy, which to be fair is unlikely if you're doing this method, um, then just make sure it's alive along the floor long fluffy toys are better than boring still toys and you'll notice that I'm not using balls at this stage because with a ball the dog um, it's not really an interactive game whereas this is an interactive game where we both can play together 
and as soon as again the dog leaves it the dog gets it back so all of this is working with um, retrieve work now so she's won the toy because I always let the dogs win and if she's won the toy she we do open hand to bring it back and then a big big game that was the very first time that bright ever retrieved anything and she won the toy she didn't have it taken off of her she got it straight back and we are mm, eight weeks old at this stage day two or three being at home um, so so it's really important that we keep the excitement super, super high. So again, just sort of re-drilling that uh, retrieve work there. She showing her where the toy is and then being super exciting and a massive big game when she brings it back. So she doesn't bring it back to give it away. She brings it back to have more play. Remember that, remember that. I can't stress enough that every time she releases the toy, she gets it back. It is so vitally important to my relationship with my dogs that they know that if they give something up, they get something back. It's never removed away from them. And that works really well in later life when we ask them to give something back like a slipper. This is what I do if she gets a slipper. I'm like, oh, running around like a crazy person. She releases the slipper back to me and she gets something back. It's always a good exchange, never a steal. And that means that we won't get any resource guarding. So she got a tooth stuck there, but she did release it when asked. So big game again. It's just kind of, I can't, can't mention it enough. And you'll end up with a dog that just loves to play with toys and that's awesome. So if you can end up at this point, that's great. I would recommend keeping your tug toys away from puppies unless you're playing with them. But in this situation, we have them down for Pippi's redirection. Then you can move outside. So we're outside now and I've asked her for a sit. She did it immediately and she gets the reward. So this is where essentially I'm moving away from rewarding with food and I'm rewarding with toys now, which makes it a lot easier to work with when you're doing photography work because you don't have to worry about dropping treats all over the place and it can be super useful. I ask her again to sit after she does this next one and she doesn't actually sit and I've included this in because it doesn't always work, it's not always plain sailing. So I ask her to leave and then I ask her to sit and she doesn't. She does this sort of half sit because she doesn't want to get a bum wet. So <laughs> that is her half sit. I was like, no, you're not getting it for that because that was not to the criteria remember the first video. So wait for her to sit, but no sit happens. So she doesn't get the reward. She makes up her own game. And when I ask her again, she's like, nah, not doing it, not doing it at all. So I bring her back, make the toy a bit more fun and ask again. And we get the sit. Straight away she gets the toy, absolutely no delay at all because she was finding it difficult so we make it easier. And that's really important. So you can always go backwards to go forwards, it's not a problem, big toy game, everybody's happy. And I think it's important also to bring in other distractions but obviously if you've got a dog that um, is resource guardy or can get aggressive when other dogs are playing, please do not do this. And in those situations, please speak to Craig. I will put his uh, details down in the description below because uh, that is a behavior that really needs solving. It is a problem behavior. So I've got Puppy in here with the distraction of Alfie. Also Finn Finn is up there on his cushion cloud as per usual. And I'm asking Puppy to play. I'm asking Puppy to leave. I'm asking Puppy to stay attached to that toy if I'm pushing against her, which she's awesome. And I'm making sure that she's super happy with everything that's going on, which of course she is. So at this stage, we'll then bring Alfie into the mix and commence playing together. Before I'm able to bring Alfie in, I need her to switch onto another toy quite happily, which um, basically just make another toy more interesting than the one she's got, and then she's rewarded for it. This means that you can exchange toys uh, really easily, and uh, basically means that you won't have a dog that just responds to their toy, you'll have a dog that responds to any toy, which is a win-win. So with Alf on his toy, he's playing quite aggressively over there by himself, and I'm asking her still to leave, and if she leaves, and looks at another dog, that's fine, because she still left it. So she still gets the reward. 
And now essentially we commence the start of the training where we're kind of using the toy to work on other things. So we're basically now using the toy as a replacement for food when it comes to rewarding things. And we're doing that quite a lot. So this is a different session, obviously. She's about 11 weeks old now, I think, in this one, 10, 11 weeks old. And this is actually a clip from her weight training, which will be in a separate video. Um, but I wanted to include it because it shows you guys how you can actually use something that they love to proof weights and then reward from them. So that was a weight and when I released her she received the toy and a big game doing the big game. So using toys can make training a little bit longer but it often proofs behaviors really well so I can't I can't really explain how useful I find it. But again we ask her to leave and as soon as she leaves Yes, you guessed it, she gets the toy straight back. <laughs> and then when she leaves it again, we can ask for the behavior. What that means is that basically, more times than not, she will get the toy um, immediately after a leave, which is really, really important because it means that you can prove such awesome behaviors like that. So that was a 15 meter weight for a toy that was trailing along the floor, which is awesome. So at this stage, I'm going to up the ante and use the toy and food interchanging to reward a good weight. So I'm backing up and I'm actually taking actual photographs so she can hear the shutter happening in this particular situation. And when I'm happy that I've got my shot, and she's got her weight I release to one bit of kibble and then immediately transfer her onto her favorite toy and that basically proves both behaviors one game that is really useful to play is with two people and one of you restrains puppy or dog and the other one runs away with the toy and that builds a lot of drive for the toy because the toy essentially is a small animal running away which although sounds a bit nasty is brilliant. It also is great when you're doing this game to prove your recalls too. So. Um, in this situation, I've recalled her off of the toy, which is pretty impressive, and then I'm rewarding her, getting her ready for a restraint, and then Dan is running again. So I didn't have good hold of her, <laughs> so I asked him to go again, but in this kind of a situation, that also helps for the dog being happy with people grabbing hold of them and moving them around, which can be vital in emergency situations. And all of this really works together, so you end up with something that looks a little bit like this, just for a toy. Yeah, she's 11 weeks. She's pretty cool. So guys, that is Toy Drive. Like I said, Toy Drive is super useful and uh, for more than one reason. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as the dog loves it. It could even be a tea towel or a sock. It doesn't matter. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful to at least one person in the internet. That would be cool. And if it is, please press the subscribe button because that would be nice. And I'll see you all again really, really soon.